In this video you will learn about the library for React which is called SWR or Stale while Revalidate and it is backed up by Versal. By default inside React we are using use effect when we need to fetch some data from the API and then we simply set with use state hook that data to the component. But this process is quite complicated when you have different API calls inside your component and it can be simplified. We typically use for this such libraries like for example TenStack Query or you might know it like React Query or another is a part of Redux Toolkit and it is RTK Query. These both libraries provide similar solution, we just use some hook which makes internally an API call and delivers for us just local properties that we can use directly in the component. SWR is exactly the same but the idea is that it is extremely simplistic and it doesn't have that many features as these two other libraries. So if you need something really simple, SWR is the way to go for you. And now it is already backed by Versal, so it is quite a safe bet to use. And here I already prepared for us a project that I want to update with API calls. And this is a project of to-do list. Here we have a header, main, footer, to-dos and to-do in order to do different things like creating a to-do, removing, updating, toggling and so on. So our first step here is to install a dependency, it will be npm install swr. Now let's look on our file with API calls, it's API.js and here we have different methods to work with our API. So what we can do, we can jump in our to-dos component and here on the top I want to import use SWR from SWR. This is our hook that we want to use. So here I use SWR and we are providing a path that we want to hash. Here we are talking about fetching our to-dos, this is why our path will be slash to-dos. This is exactly how our requests will be cached. And now as a second parameter we are providing a function which must return a promise to get a list of our to-dos. So here will be get to-dos and it is coming from API. Let's look on it again, this is just an async function which responds with data. And as you can see actually here on the top I already prepared a cache key which is just a string of slash to do's. And it makes a lot of sense because we want to reuse it in different places. This is why instead of the string slash to do's I want to write here a cache key that we are using from the API. So this is how we are using this hook. But what we are getting back? In the result we can read for example is loading, then an error if we need and also some data. And actually our data are our to-dos, so let's map it to variable to-dos. As you can see now I'm getting an error that to-dos is already created, let's remove this to-do state and console log what we are getting. I want to render here is loading, then our error and to-dos array. As you can see in browser our code is broken, but we must look on our console log here on the top. This console log shows that loading isn't true, error is undefined and data is undefined. So in order to fix this problem I want to check here that if we have is loading state, then we should not render our application, we can just return here some markup with word loading. And we can do exactly the same for an error, so we don't render our application if we have an error. And actually here we can even render an error that was set. Let's check again, I am reloading the page and now our application is working and we got here three elements. Let's open our network. As you can see there was a request on slash to do's on localhost 3000 for slash to do's and here we are getting our three to do's. So as you can see first of all we had true undefined undefined and after data are loaded false undefined and array of our to do's. Which actually means with this single line here we are getting these local properties inside our component and we can render information on the screen. As we passed here inside our main component to do's, our application works out of the box. Now let's implement adding of the to do here on the top. We need to open our header component and as you can see it doesn't really communicate with the parent. And what I want to do now here, I want to get from our use swr exactly the same request. 
I'm providing exactly the same cache key and here I want to write get to do's, which is exactly the same get to do's method. And you might say, okay, this code doesn't really make any sense. We're fetching our data in our root component to do's and not in the header. But the main point is that this single liner won't do additional requests. We can check it here. I can write data, map it to to do's and just console log here our to do's. And let's look in browser. As you can see in network, we are not getting to requests because our request is cached by this key. And now in every single component, doesn't matter on which level it is situated, we can write this single line to get access to all data, which actually means you don't really need to pass this data as props to get access to them or somehow difficultly create a state management and share this data. You can simply get the same cache data on every level. But what I really want inside our header is not the list of the to do's. I want to get here a function mutate that we also can get from this line. And this function mutate is directly related to the get to do's. Why that? Here, as you can see, we have a key down and exactly in this moment we are creating our new to do. So here I want to write inside our key down text a wait and then add to do. And this add to do is coming from the API and we must provide inside a to do to create. It will be text, which is our new text, then is completed, property will be false. Let's have a look on this function, add to do just needs to get to do's to create. This is what we are calling here. So this is just an API call and after this we want to write await mutate. And what it does, it actually will get our list of to do's again, so the list is updated. So we don't really care to get a response of created object and then by hands update it on the client. We simply get the whole array of to do's from the backend again and all our components will be notified with changes. How will it look like? Here in browser I am reloading the page. This is just a single initial request. Now I want to type here something and hit enter. And as you can see, first of all, it was a post request on slash to do's to create new item. This is our new item. And after this, the next request was a get again with the list of the to do's. And here on the bottom, we see our element, which essentially means we can just type something, hit enter, and our element appears there. And it happens with this mutate function. And the goal of mutate function is essentially invalidate our request of to do's and it will be done again. Now we can do exactly the same in other components. I want to copy this line, go to our to do component and put here this line. We need to import here our use SWR and also our cache key as well as our get to do's function. And here we don't really need this data, we just need mutate function. Now here we need to do several things. First of all, there is a toggle to do function, which must change toggle state of our to do. We can write here await update to do. And this is a function from our API, where inside I'm providing a to do ID and an object that we want to update. Our text will be to do text. And here is completed property is something that we want to update. But what we are doing after, we can simply call here mutate with await obviously, and we don't really need to do anything else. Now let's do exactly the same in remove to do. Here we can just call with await remove to do function, where inside we are providing a to do ID that we want to remove, and then with await we are calling mutate again. And the last one here will be inside updating of our to do, we can call update to do again. Where inside text we're providing event dot target dot value and this completed will be just to do is completed. After this again we're calling our await mutate. Let's change our last place where we need to do that in another component main and then we can check it all at once. Here we're importing our uses wr, then cache key and our get to do's function. So here we have our toggle all and let's create here a function toggle all and mutate and inside we're providing event.target.checked. Let's check if it's working now. First of all here we can click cross and it will directly remove our element and it did API call. 
Also here we can update our element and after hitting enter it is directly updated. And we can also toggle our element and even after page reload this information is saved. As you can see by using mutate it is extremely simple to implement this functionality. So even with a single line you can implement a lot but it can be even better. One of the features that I really like inside this library is called optimistic update. It means that we will show updated state of our component even before the API made its request. And if this request for some reason fails, then it will automatically revert the state to the previous. How can we do that? First of all, we need to see if we have a problem. I'm jumping here inside the API and here is our add to do. What I want to create here is a delay promise of 2 seconds, which actually means when here I am calling delay, it will delay our request by 2 seconds. And it can be in the real project when your server is slow. How will it look like? I will type here the name of new to do, hit enter, and as you can see nothing happens on the screen until 2 seconds passed. Which actually is not good for our UI, because we don't show any loading indicator and this can confuse a user. Here is a great place to use optimistic updates in order to solve this problem. So let's try to add our to-do with optimistic update. This is why here inside our header, where we have this add to-do line and mutate, I don't really want to use them. I want to create here an additional function and call it add to-do optimistic. And we want to get inside text. And it is an asynchronous function and we want to get inside new text. Now here we can call with await this add to do optimistic and provide inside our new text. So what logic do we want to write? We want to write here await mutate, but now we will have some parameters inside. And our first parameter here must be our promise function add to do, where inside we must provide all needed data. And in our case here it was this text and this completed false. This is just fine for us. But also as a second parameter I want to provide here options that we will create in a second. So what is our options? First of all here I want to create optimistic data. And optimistic data is an array of our to-dos with the new item which is already inserted. And sure we will get an ID only after we will save our record, but we can use some random ID until the record will be properly saved. This is why here before we can create our new to-do just on the client. And this is an object where ID will be generated by crypto.randomuuid. Then we're providing here our text which will be new text. And this completed is false. So this is our new to-do. Now we want to merge our list of to-dos and just to remind you we have this list of to-dos here on the top. We need to spread all of them and add at the end our new to-do. This is our optimistic data. Additionally we want to provide some attributes. So first of all rollback on error must be true because we want to roll back if some error happens. Then populate cache true and revalidate false. So the main idea with all these options is to do optimistic update, rollback if we have a problem and do not revalidate cache after we already have our data. Let's check if this code will work. I will open here inspect because I know that it won't work. I'm reloading the page and I'm trying to create a new record. I'm hitting here enter and as you can see we got an error. To do every is not a function and it is happening in one of our components. But the main problem here as you can see our to-dos now is not an array, it's an object and this is our object that we just created. Why it happens? Because actually this add to do function does not return for us an array of to-dos, it returns for us a created object. This is why in order to implement optimistic updates we must tune our function. And what we need to do here I want to simply provide a list of to-dos as a second parameter. We know that now here we are getting the list of our to-dos and instead of our response data now we can spread our to-dos and return here response data at the end. Which actually means our add to-do function now is returning for us a list of to-dos and not just a single item. Now let's create a record and as you can see there is no error. So let's check how it works now. I want to remove everything so it is not confusing us. We have here just records now. Now I'm typing 
create to do and hit enter. And as you can see, our create to do is directly there. But essentially inside our API, we did not remove this delay. This delay is still there. And our API call is there only after two seconds. But when we are just typing something and hit enter, we are getting this information instantaneously, which actually means our optimistic updates are working. But as you can see, it takes quite a lot of code to cover this option, which means it takes some time to adjust your code. And actually, if you are interested to prepare for React interview to get a job and earn more money, I highly recommend you to check this video also, because I covered the all React questions that are asked together with practical tasks.